Hello, um, good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are happy to introduce our session number four. Uh, we are together to discuss technological innovations to improve health and safety. I would say that our session is one of the most important because it is our future, everything dealing with um, IT dealing with new things in technologies. And uh, here with us, very experienced and uh, successful persons that have already done a lot of things in technologies development. And I'm sure there will be more and more forward. Uh, before we start, let me tell you some rules. First of all, uh, chat is open and we can greet each other. We can, uh, you can write your questions. You can discuss or so whatever you want. It is one option. Another is for our speakers, uh, so your speeches will be in duration, 15 minutes, and then we will have open discussion and all other questions or something that we can share between each other and for our audience, we can discuss afterwards. Uh, our session um, uh, hopefully will be ended at 16.05 at ten times, uh, but uh, uh, feel free to contact our speakers and uh, moderators, um, me personally, after the session, if you are interested in the topic. All uh, contact details are for all speakers and the information about speakers. So here we are. And uh, let me start. Uh, actually, I didn't present myself. I just want to say a few words. I'm from Ukraine. I presented as well in other sections. Uh, but happy to moderate uh, this section because, as I said, IT is our future. Um, first, our speaker, let me introduce to the audience um, uh, Vasileus uh, Liros. He is CEO in Hellenic Drones. And he will talk about drone technology in health and safety services. As health safety practitioner, I'm pleased to um, hear something new in this topic. The floor is yours. Oh, I'm sorry, I was... Uh, Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, yes, so I was, uh, uh, I, if I understand right, so the first speaker has not joined us yet, yes, and I will um, present the second one, is it okay? Perfect. So, um, it's a person that I'm so honored to know myself in person, the Roland Lichi. I met him in Albania and I have some information regarding him. So he will present us a software supporting safety audits, very important topic as well. Happy to hear. And Roland, uh, he studied civil engineering at at uh, Polytechnic University of Tirana, Albania, and he's one of the very first health and safety professionals in Albania in the modern era, encountering more than 17 years of experience in the field. Uh, so uh, throughout his experience uh, in this region, he has contributed to many, many prestigious 
projects and industries, uh, for example, oil and gas, infrastructure, green energy, of course, water sector, and uh, he's working on the European standards and uh, recognized IFI uh, policies. He uh, joined Management Forest Group in 2008, so already many years. And uh, um, uh, Roland has been Managing Director of ERMC MFG Group Albanian Affiliate since 2012. So good luck, Roland, and floor is yours. Hey, Olga. Um, thank you for the kind presentation and uh, nice to meet you again. At this time, not in person, unfortunately. I wish we have um, a chance soon to meet again. So, okay, thank you. And have to this uh, uh, safety alarm. <coughs> and presenting the safety audit software, which have been um, really helpful uh, recently in our uh, services to our clients. So let me share the screen. Okay. Uh, and just make sure that Do you see the screen? Is it okay? Yes, we can see the screen. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So uh, today we are going to speak about uh, safety audit software. And uh, as Olga explained, I'm the ERMC Engineering and Risk Management Consultant and Managing Director in Albania. Uh, the ERMC is a subsidiary of Management Force and operates in the country since 2012. Um, uh, so, uh, as you know already, we are um, health and safety, environmental and uh, social aspects of professional health and safety and risk management uh, consultancy services company uh, operating uh, since 2012, but uh, we, uh, management forces landed the country since 2008 and we operate uh, under the Management Force uh, Group uh, guidelines. Uh, we have a very wide experience in the country, um, extended experience in, in many industries in all economic sectors, such as oil and gas, construction, infrastructure, cement, industry, and uh, services. Uh, just to brief you a little bit who we are, um, as you, uh, as many of the attendees might have been aware, Management Force Group has developed uh, some software which has been of its benefit in doing the job. Uh, I'm saying that, I'm underlining that because um, it is uh, very helpful when you have developed your um, methodologies, when you have developed a way how to approach um, the, the topics, the attempts, uh, the services that you are providing and uh, the way how you optimize the services and be of, um, of useful to your clients and uh, improving this has been, uh, has been also the development of these softwares that uh, you can see here today. I'm going to speak uh, about the safety audit software, uh, which have been recently uh, used in um, our services in Albania. But first of all, before getting into details, <clears throat> let's uh, make a quick, uh, let's say, uh, questions that are very common to our uh, recent job. And uh, First of all, as I said, why we make an audit? We all know that audit is a leading and a proactive initiative with, which helps the organization to plan before the, um, the uh, unpleasant issue is coming to the workplace or before an incident can happen uh, or uh, before um, before uh, an unpleasant event can uh, occupy the, the workplace. 
So um, we are first trying to prevent. And uh, this is what the, ma the main scope of an audit can be. So uh, in other words, it can improve the workplace safety. It can reduce the accidents, the injuries, or the illnesses of the people. Uh, it ensures also the legal compliance because we all know that there are some legal regulations. So what do you do? You make sure that you are in full compliance with legal regulations before you are processing with the works. Uh, it also makes sure that the standards and uh, procedures and uh, also the policies are implemented in the desired uh, in, in the desired level. And uh, it helps you also to review the implementation of systems and identify gaps in order to plan and uh, improve and uh, uh, put the risks at an acceptable level. It is also very important, as I uh, mentioned earlier, um, it gives you a good safety culture, and a good organization safety culture. The proactive and leading approach are always considered as good elements in a, in a good, in a better safety culture of the organization. And of course, it therefore um, conveys you to con continuous improvement because at the end of the day, we need to improve. We need to make things better for our people and for our um, workplace conditions. Um, let's move forward. Uh, a typical audit process for all, you know, for all, I believe many have been involved in such initiatives. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I have a short list here, a very simple and typical audit process, which if stands for, first of all, we need to define the scope. We need to, uh, to, you know, to define the site and the installation which we have to audit. I mean with that, we need to understand what are the standards, the, the fields to be audited, the people to be audited, the process to be audited. Another um, important element we need to define is the benchmarking reference. Where do you want to do the audit? What exactly do we want to audit? We want to base on company standards and requirements, uh, uh, which easily can be defined in the contract that the company has with one contractor or another contractor or many contractors. You have a benchmark also of the legal requirements, sometimes uh, uh, ISO requirements, as well as standards that derive uh, from the sector or business which you are going to implement the audit. Once you have confirmed the benchmarking, it allows you to develop the protocol. It means that uh, uh, in accordance with the, with the standards, uh, with the requirements, with the legal requirements, with the, with the ISO requirements, and as well as uh, business uh, uh, standards, you are therefore developing the audit protocols, which you will base then uh, and uh, then to perform the checks and the, the review of the their implementation. Um, but also, you need to have a methodology in order to do this uh, to do this audit, and we will speak about this later on. And uh, of course, once you have developed uh, what I mentioned previously. Then you define the process, you define the schedule because, uh, and the team, because all these are important components in order to have a clear and a planned um, activity. Um, going back to the methodology, um, there is a methodology that management force uses, which is called uh, plus two minus two methodology. It has been developed by Dr. George Panopoulos in 1993. This is a very practicable, simple, and efficient methodology, which has been tested many times in our, um, in our job. And the basis of this methodology is that for any deviation or non-conformance identified during the audit, 
it requires an, in, in, uh, an immediate assessment of the risk involved because at the end of the day, the um, controls that you are going to perform are based on an assessment of the risks. And if the risk is acceptable, you can live with it uh, and make your plans until a better improvement. Uh, if the risk is high, then you need to take measures uh, to implement measures in place in order to, uh, not to cause any incident to the people or to the or to the um, uh, the surroundings. So uh, everything is based on on uh, assessing the risks. Uh, going in more details uh, about the plus to minus two methodology, I can give you a better um, overview. For example, um, what means uh, class two uh, mark? It means that everything is perfect. We have a full compliance of what we are checking. Uh, if we have a plus, plus one mark, we can see that for deviation involving tribal risks or not satisfying totally the auditor, there should be given a warning to potential degradation of the future uh, processes. If you can see then uh, a mark that reaches uh, zero, the works can be carried out for a wider period of time if proposed until the remedies are completed. Then the minus one mark, the work can be, can be carried for a limited time while in the same time you are implementing measures in order to, to, to close these gaps identified and then you go to acceptable level, level of risk. Or you have the case of minus two, then uh, work must be stopped immediately for, uh, for actions to be taken and uh, uh, make the workplace safe. If you, if you see, um, I have put also audit and assessment and these cases can be uh, can be defined in another mode, but the methodology remains the same. It stands the same, plus two, minus two, but it can be written differently. For example, I have another case that I have been uh, using uh, uh, in our, in our uh, services to our clients, moderating uh, a little bit from, from, from the previous example. Uh, so as you can see, a plus two case, it gives an excellent uh, uh, workplace, full compliance, or I, uh, exceeding it. This is a good example in order to um, share with the, with the ODT uh, a continuous improvement uh, um, message and uh, congratulate and uh, to, to move forward and improve also other aspects that might require such such uh, such thing. The other case is plus one. You can see that it is high. However, there is a very minor room, room for improvement for very specific things that can be adjusted, can be aligned, etc. It depends on the on the binding. If you have a case zero, is a moderate uh, uh, area which requires some improvements in quality or quantity or efficiency. Uh, if we have a case uh, minus one, it, it means that you have found uh, low uh, quality or insufficient arrangements or insufficient quantities for this specific, uh, specific area. And uh, as well as in the case minus two, uh, very low or non-existence uh, measures for this uh, for this specific uh, area which we are checking. Um, so we have the methodology, we have the team, we have uh, we have the protocols, we have everything. Now, if anyone can think that we are in the in the best in the best um, position, so we can move forward. But now is the time that all the software comes. And I'm going to mention some capabilities uh, which this, this, uh, this uh, software gives in order to facilitate the job. 
in order to, uh, to uh, save time and apparently people from, from, your, from your job and uh, provide more effective, uh, effective uh, services. It is very powerful too. Uh, it easy for recording, for reporting, and for monitoring the style of the site audit findings. Um, apparently, the software provides a very friendly user environment uh, for the main actions of the site audits, which are the records. You can record very easily to this uh, to this software your um, records. And this standardization of audit procedure, um, the protocols and the methodology that I was speaking earlier, you can easily adapt to this uh, software. Uh, the findings, their grouping, and their assessment are also um, a strong point of this software, which, which can be very useful to the, to the overall framework of the, of the audit that uh, can be um, uh, developed. You can also add pictures for supporting the, the, the findings that, uh, that uh, you are referring to, or you can also add documentation, you can attach documentation to this, uh, to this uh, software, and it is very easy and configurable reporting. So you can do anything, you can configure it in accordance to the needs. We will see it later on uh, with um, real examples. Uh, features of the safety audit software you can um, have on it many languages. For example, if you want to be in a, in a project in Greece, you can use the Greek uh, language. If you want to be in a project in Romania, you can use the Romanian language, the English language, the Bulgarian language, the Albanian language. It is uh, a multi-language tool. Uh, it gives a network access. It is, uh, it is built in HSC protocols database. So you need to define the protocols, the database, and it is also helpful for your job. And this is where you um, integrate this into the, into the software. Uh, it is very easy to monitor the data, to group the uh, the information and to sort and to export to another um, to another location uh, interfaces um, interface customized by user reports customized by user it can be also used by multi users um, uh, in, in the same time or in different time and uh, if once you have defined the actions for, for each user and the, the, the area of the each user which is going to be operated. Um, uh, for example, uh, supporting uh, what I said earlier as an organizational structure, this software, it gives you the flexibility. Um, if you are going to implement um, a project or an assessment or an audit or an evaluation in the same company which operates in different countries or in different plans. Uh, and I will um, mention this as a beneficial later on when we will see also comparable results um, in one year or in every six months if this audit is being implemented with two different times. So if you, as you can see in this uh, picture, this is extracted by the software and gives you uh, details that you do this in different times, in different sites, but in one, under one project umbrella. Um, the HSE protocols database and pre-configured protocols, it are uh, organized in sections, subsections and fields um, following the legislation or the citation information for each field in every language that I was um, explaining earlier. Uh, if you want to add EU legislation information, you can add. If you want to add American legislation information, uh, you can add. Uh, Australian legislation information, you can add. 
it's very flexible and uh, very easy to um, add, incorporate, or remove from from the software. Yeah, you have the ability to insert, to update, to delete protocols, to import protocols from another project. So uh, going back to the to the discussion and to the presentation uh, I, I was uh, sharing earlier for another project, another locations, another plants. Uh, you can also not only import but also export protocols for another assignment for another project. Um, what type of uh, what type of data does safety audit software contains? It 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 gives the audit number. Is sequential for each site. It is automatically generated, so you don't need to count. You just put the first one, and it generates automatically. It gives the start and the end of the date of the of the audit. Legislation, as I mentioned, national, European standards, regulations, specifics. It provides the auditees whom you are going to audit. Also, the weather conditions, which in some um, times it's very important you to know the weather conditions because somehow may affect the the performance of the audit it gives you other information there and also the information about audit participants for every single one uh, this is an example how you can um, how the software is built off so as i said the audit number the start date the end date legislation these are fields where you can easily type, put the name, remove, add anything that you consider it is important to be um, uh, incorporated in, in, the, in the process. Um, the, the questionnaire consists of selected fields and is categorized by section and subsection. For example, you will see for each field, um, the, you will have uh, questions that your questions have been uh, firstly generated when you make the the audit protocols and uh, and the benchmarking of the of the of the audit that you are going to perform. So you are you are organizing your work based on section. For example, we have chemical management. Subsections which are deriving from these sections is the hazard assessment and control, is the medical surveillance which are related to chemical management, is the hazard communication which are related to chemical management. Then for every specific subsection, you have the fields. For every field, you have the findings. For every finding, you have the rate, as I said in the beginning, from plus two to minus two. There are comments that can be done in case you need to put any comment. There are the references that we spoke earlier. Is, is this referring to a regulation? Is this referring to a standard? Is this referring to a, uh, a legislation? Or all together, you can put them also all together. And uh, if you want to attach anything, document or picture, you can uh, apparently attach. Uh, this software generates also corrective action reports in case you need to put some deadline, you need to put some responsibilities, you need to put some uh, people in power, uh, you need to have how this, this corrective actions come, why it comes, who found, etc. etc. The references as well. But again, I'm repeating is um, uh, is a software uh, that you can work out uh, in accordance with the needs. If you want to exclude the corrective action report, you can exclude it. If you want to include it, you can include it. It's very friendly and very uh, useful tool. Um, it also contains a complete set of information which are very important and it gives you the option to select whatever you want to demonstrate in the report it selects uh, the, the, the information. If you want to have the general data in the report, you can have it. If you want to exclude it, you can exclude it. If you want to have the audit summary results only, if you want to have the audit summary results uh, 
and the audit result per subsection explained earlier, we are talking about graphs now, uh, you can have all the three together or each one uh, separately. It's up to you, up to the, to the uh, needs of, of, uh, of the user. And uh, of course, if you want, uh, then you have the ratings, you have the comments, you have the references, you can include or exclude everything you want. And then at the end, if you want to have a word format um, a report, you can choose to have a word format report. If you want to have a PDF format report, you can choose to have a PDF format report. Uh, this is an example of an audit report uh, which the general data are generated. For example, the project is called the Safety Improvement Project. We, um, we highlight the country, we highlight the address, the contractor, the subcontractors, the specific site then, where is the specific site, the specific address, then the, the benchmarking, is this audit uh, going to be performed in accordance with a specific legislation, only national or European, what are, who are the auditees, the weather conditions, and if there is any other information useful to the, to the, to the process. And also, as you can see, you can have uh, the audit participants, the specific time that they participate in the audit, their function, and, uh, and the company in which they come from. Um, again, these are the graphs that can be generated in accordance with the findings. So it, the software generates these graphs very um, uh, automatically automatically why you have included the information. And again, going back to the audit methodology, which we mentioned in the beginning, we have the audit uh, uh, cases and rating, which is the plus to minus two uh, methodology. And you can have statistics, uh, you can have statistics for better orientation um, with these graphs. Uh, in order to understand where you stand and where you want to focus. Uh, for example, in this case, we have a five cases of stopping of activity. Apparently, you need to pay attention to this area, but also to the other area, which have high risk activities of 25 cases. And of course, moving forward, you need to work uh, with the moderate risk areas and uh, improve also some compliance and congratulate for full compliance uh, issues. Um, this is an example of, uh, of uh, the findings during our recent uh, generated project in Albania. If you, uh, if you can see, we have used the, the second methodology uh, plus to minus two uh, being explained in the beginning. And, uh, the, the picture on the right side, it gives the, the protocols which we have organized for sections, subsections, fields. And this is what it, it provides. So um, going uh, in more details in terms of vision of the corporate or, or the, the ODP, you can have uh, a percentage uh, um, indication of what you have found. In terms of capacity, you have a percentage again of what we have found, and uh, so on and so forth with system method, methods and tools. So the overall audit um, orientation uh, helps you in this simple graph to organize or to, to tell you what is the situation of the ODT. And of course, then you need to, to, to see the, the details uh, of this uh, performance, but it's very helpful and very indicative for your further actions to be taken in order to, um, to improve, the, to improve the, the area where you audit it. Um, then,
this is an example. This is an example of the audit report. Uh, um, you remember we saw earlier section, subsection, and fields and findings and rating and comments and the references. So, the, uh, so this is how the audit report will be generated from the software. So you have the section, which we saw earlier, it was a chemical margin. We saw the subsection, which is a hazard assessment and control. Uh, we have the fields when chemical agents are used, the respective uh, MSDS are available. We have the finding of this specific field. We have the rating of this specific field. We have any comment if there is any comment, and we have the relevant references for this specific um, field, which we uh, which we found in our uh, in our process, and so on and so forth. Uh, it generates other sections and subsections in accordance with um, organization and uh, and uh, the definition we have uh, we have placed for this specific we have organized for this specific uh, activity. Uh, so that's it. I hope I have um, provided. Uh, I have provided enough information uh, and I would encourage you to use this software in this modern, um, in this modern time and uh, have been very useful to our day-to-day -day job. Uh, this uh, specific audit software for me, as I said, very useful, very um, helpful also for the clients in order to understand because it might happen that some clients do not have a lot of time to read a 100 pages report, but this software, it gives them um, uh, time, and it reduces uh, cost, and apparently is effective for, for their job. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Roland. Uh, you are right. Uh, you provide a lot of information, but it created a lot of questions. So please mm. so stay with us and then yeah. and <clears throat> our guests and, and me personally, so we can ask you more deeper to know more about this nice and useful software. Thank you for your presentation again. Yeah. And uh, we go further. Uh, the next our speaker is um Athanasius Bugas, he represents uh, uh, Sigma information system. And um, uh, about him, let me tell you more. Uh, uh, Athanasius is a graduate of the TEI of Athens, uh, and uh, he has more than 25 years of experience in management, technical lead, analysis, design, and implementation of database system, mainly for the public and uh, medical sectors. He also has a long background in the development and integration of mission-critical real-time systems for defense and space. Since 2020, he holds the position of the head software engineering in Sigma information system. Uh, he's a member of management for uh, Sigma information system, a member of management uh, for his group, which develops specialized uh, software products and solutions for health and safety sector. So, Atanasius, uh, your uh, topic, uh, if I uh, understand correctly, modern software platform boosting health and safety performance. I would say it's like uh, continuing the topic of audit and then performance. So please, you're very welcome to take your speech. Thank you, Olga. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. I want to thank the Safety Gala for giving me this opportunity to. Let's say I just this presentation that I will make has uh, one big purpose to motivate to motivate uh, companies, organizations to start who that have not gone that have not entered the the new technologies uh, 
get uh, to start looking for their solutions because there's big there are big solutions there are so 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 big numbers so large number of uh, solutions out there that like, yeah, can make their everyday operations easier that uh, it should worth looking it should worth adopting okay adopting in the end so uh, let me share my presentation okay so i will talk about modern software platform boosting health and safety performance again uh, I, uh, I represent Sigma Information Systems, a member of management force group. We are, we have been, uh, we, we've been out there for only three years since we founded this company, but we carry the experience of uh, more than uh, 20 years of uh, software development for management force side at least. So our software products, we try to incorporate the full uh, experience for more these years of uh, operating in the uh, health and safety sector. So let's move on. Uh, okay, let's start with a typical, the starting typical point is that we all know how important health and safety uh, functions are, are, how critical they are for any workplace. Okay, so, Health and safety, like any other function in an organization, uh, needs to collect data. This function needs to collect data and needs to manage data. Sometimes a lot of data, big amount of data, and of course, track data. So what is the problem with uh, managing data and collecting data and all this? The, the, the traditional methods, all the, the most companies, most organizations use the traditional methods to track and management health and safety data. There are three problems. Most of the, the times, the methods are manual. So we actually paper-based or still using spreadsheets. Second problem is that uh, because of that, they are time consuming. If you have a small amount of data, then it's easier to process the data. When data gets larger and larger in volume and size, then gets uh, the time to process the data and make something useful out of uh, the data gets, uh, how do you call it, exponential, grows exponentially. So it's, it's at some point, it's just no point anymore. And number three, it's prone to errors. You use a, 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 you, if you use a spreadsheet, let's say, what happens is that uh, you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, 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 homogenize your data. So you, you are prone, you are very, very easy to make errors, to make uh, mistakes, and you carry all, you usually carry these mistakes for a long time without sometimes noticing them. And this is where modern software platforms can help. Let me see. Okay, it changed. So what are what we mean with modern software platforms? Platforms. They are actually technologies that are designed to improve efficiency, productivity, and accuracy, among others. So for health and safety, this platform raises uh, offer a range of benefits, among which are real-time tracking of data, automated alerts. Very important and improve risk assessment and many others. Just a, just a short list. So, organization by leveraging modern software platforms, they can enhance their self and safety performance. Number one, reduce the risk of accidents and incidents at a big target, and comply with regulatory regulatory requirements. That's very important. Three very very important aspect target for each organization. So what are the key benefits of modern software platform? Number one, real-time tracking of health and safety data. So platform, the platform allows organizations to monitor potential hazards and identify areas for improvement quickly. This can include tracking incident rates, let's say, hazard assessment, compliance data. Those are just examples. 
Another benefit, that Almighty Talet in the notifications for potential hazards, such as unsafe conditions or non-compliant behavior. Ensure uh, that uh, potential issues are identified and addressed before they escalate into accidents or incidents, reactive. Another benefit, monitoring compliance with health and safety regulations, very, very important. Platforms can help organizations ensure compliance with regulatory, regulatory requirements, including those OSSJ, ISO, and other standards. This includes tracking, training, and certifications, conducting audits, and maintaining accurate records. Maintaining accurate records of everything is not easy if volume of information of records just increases and increases and increases. Another benefit, improved accident reporting and investigation. Platforms can streamline incident reporting and investigation processes, allowing organizations to quickly identify the root cause of the incident and implement corrective actions. This can help prevent similar incidents from occurring in the future. Another incident, another benefit, enhanced risk assessment and mitigation. So a platform can improve the accuracy and efficiency and efficiency of risk assessment, allowing organizations to identify potential hazards and implement appropriate mitigation measures. As I think was presented in the previous presentation. So let's see uh, some popular modern software-based technologies health and safety. First of all, it's a uh, test software system. The one that we're talking about right now. Other ones, wearable, wearable, wearable technology, such as, such as smart helmets, smart glasses, and smart watches. This can be used to monitor employee health and safety in real time, including tracking vital signs, locations, and environmental data to identify potential hazards and alert employees in case of emergency. Another one, mobile apps. They can provide employees with access to health and safety information, training, and reporting capabilities from their mobile devices. This allows employees to report incidents, access safety manual, and receive real-time alerts. Another, virtual and augmented reality. They can be used to simulate hazard scenarios, allowing employees to practice safety protocols in a safe environment. This can improve employee preparedness and reduce the risk of accidents and incidents. These are, uh, uh, these are, there are solutions out there that are already usable. We saw, uh, we saw a solution uh, six months ago in, uh, in a conference, in a conference. And another one is artificial intelligence. Let's see, let's make a parenthesis here and talk about artificial intelligence because it's next big thing in technology, not just uh, not just information technology, but in technology generally. I think that uh, in this era, in these uh, years, uh, this is the next big thing because everybody, if uh, most of people have started using, have started taking a taste of artificial intelligence because of all these, uh, of uh, some uh, platforms out there that give you responses, artificial intelligence responses to questions in natural language. So we all get and get a taste of what artificial intelligence can do in our lives, okay? Let's see what artificial intelligence can provide for sales and safety. Number one, this is just a short list. Ah, and uh, one, uh, to go back to the previous slide, I have left exactly accidentally out the drone technology, the use of drones in health and safety, okay? One more aspect. So. Artificial intelligence, what are the benefits for health and safety? Number one, let's say this is a, just example. Number one, hazard identification. The field intelligence can help identify potential hazards and risk in the workplace by analyzing data from various sources, such as sensors, cameras, and other internet of things devices. We are still, in the past, the last few years, we're talking about internet of things devices, which means connected devices uh, exchange the uh, devices that exchange data, that can exchange data in, in automatic everyday processes. So, artificial intelligence algorithms 
can analyze this data in real time to detect patterns and anomalies that would indicate potential hazards. One big thing that artificial intelligence does is create patterns, detect patterns of behaviors and anomalies. Okay, so what artificial intelligence does is one thing that does is that it takes data, analyzes data, creates patterns so that it can make predictions. Number two, predictive, predictive analytics. Artificial intelligence can help predict and prevent workplace accidents and injuries by analyzing historical data and identifying patterns and trends, as I said before. Predictive analytics can help employers take proactive measures to prevent accidents before they occur. How important can this be? Safety monitoring, number three. Artificial intelligence can monitor the workplace for potential safety hazards and alert employers and supervisors if any hazards are detected. For example, AI algorithms can monitor for hazardous, hazardous materials or unsafe work conditions and notify employees to take appropriate precautions. Don't ask me how artificial intelligence can do all these things. I'm not an expert, but I'm looking at it. I'm still investigating, okay? I'm still searching. Personalized training. Artificial intelligence can provide personalized training for employees based on their individual learning styles and needs. This can help ensure that employees receive the training they need to work safely and efficiently. I guess only we can all understand the importance of this. Number five, decision making support. Artificial intelligence can help support decision making related to, re to health and safety by providing real time data and analytics. This can help employers make informed decisions about workplace safety policies and procedures. Just five of the benefits that artificial intelligence can play in health and safety. Just to be very practical, here are some platforms that are already out there for you to start searching. There are hundreds, dozens, or maybe hundreds of platforms, platforms out there from different companies, okay? I just have a very, very short list here that uh, just for to initiate, motivate, companies to start looking. The tools are there, the platforms are there, okay? So start looking, okay? Let's say, so one of them is uh, COVEX. That, uh, here we have just uh, four examples that already use artificial intelligence, okay? They are cloud-based, most of them. And let's say the first one, cloud, uh, COVEX, cloud-based platform that uses AI to identify workplace hazards and provide real-time insights into safety performance. It analyzes data from various sources such as sensors, cameras, and other internet of things devices to identify potential hazards and alert employees and supervisors. How important. Vector solutions, something uh, similar. Uh, safety tech, it's a mobile first platform that uses artificial intelligence to provide real time insights into workplace safety. Uh, so, and they analyze data from uh, safety audit training records and blah, blah, blah. In order to identify potential hazards, provide recommendations for, me for improvement. Also, so they provide recommendations for improvement. Intellex, a cloud-based uh, management uh, software platform that uses AI to provide real-time insight into workplace safety. The platform analyzes data from various sources, infrastructure uh, safety inspection, incident report, and uh, they provide recommendations for improvement. Also, uses Artificial intelligence to automate compliance management tasks and streamline workflows. Just for example, okay, if you look out there, start looking, there are a lot, lot of platforms that have been established. They work, and but each platform has they have their own, let's say they have their, their own uh, requirements, they have their own design, and uh, they are different from each other. But I'm sure that you will find something that can fit. Okay, for your needs. Let's see the next one. So, and a few software platforms not using artificial intelligence. One is Sidebox, that uh, a management, it is management software that offers a range of features for management safety documents, training, and inspection. Safety Culture, mobile first platform, offers a range of features for managing safety inspections, audit, and incident reporting. Cross Cloud-based 
This HS management software that offers a range of features for managing safety documents, training, and inspections. For example, and of course, our in house platform, PLCS, Project Lifecycle Safety Suite. It's a, a system that, a platform that, EHS platform that we built in house, that uh, we provide to clients, okay, Sigma Information System, which is cloud based EHS management software that offers a wide range of features for management, commanding safety documents, training, inspections, incidents, and much more. Okay, the platform is multi-language, extensively configurable, customizable to specific needs of each organization. I will have the opportunity to talk about it in a, a little at the end, before the end. Hmm. Let's see practically a few case studies of a successfully of successful uh, implementation of EHS software platforms to big corporations. Okay, let's see. Coca-Cola European Partners implemented a mobile app called uh, SAT Connect, which provides employees with a streamlined process for reporting incident hazards, as well as accessing health and safety information and resources. What they achieved, reportedly, uh, they let me just uh, comment here that I have not double-checked those percentages, those uh, KPIs. Sorry for this, I didn't have the time for this. Just what I found on the internet, okay? So they have achieved 20% reduction in incidents and 90% improvement in incident reporting. Isn't, it, isn't this very, very, uh, very, very important to improve incident reporting? You want whatever happens, you want the reporting to be as much as possible so you can, you can manage incidents. Nestle, another big corporation, implemented a digital platform called Safety Perception Service, which uses surveys and data analytics to identify potential hazard and areas for improvement. They have achieved 35% reduction in lost time injuries and 60% reduction in recordable injuries. ABB implemented a digital platform uh, which uses sensors and data analytics to monitor the performance of points and identify potential hazards. 60, they have achieved 60% reduction in points related incidents. I don't know how they did it. I haven't read the, uh, the service yet, but this is what has happened. Vodafone implemented a digital platform called uh, Vodafone Smart Tech, which uses wearable technology, wearable technology, which including smart watches and smart glasses to improve hazard identification and communication. They have achieved 30% reduction in incidents and 50% reduction in lost time injuries. I guess that uh, if they are true, they are impressive. So, uh, these are our big operations, okay? Let's see smaller size companies. Just uh, three more examples. Uh, for my Finnish company, Exo Autotech specializing in minerals and metals processing technology. They implemented a digital platform called MySafety, which provides employees with access to safety resources, training materials, and incident reporting tools. 40% reduction in incidents, 70% increase in near miss reporting. Very important. Black Miner, a Swedish agricultural cooperative, implemented a digital platform called Safety Work, which provides employees with access to safety resources and incident reporting tools. They achieved 25% reduction in incidents. And Carlyle Interconnect Technologies, a UK based company, they implement the NHS management system, which includes modules for incident management, hazard assessments, and compliance management. They achieved 30% reduction in incidents and 60% reduction in lost time injuries. Okay, I just, I just wanted to make this uh, presentation uh, motivating, okay, so I want to make it practical. This is already happening in the last few years. Companies have made the next step, the next many, some of them have made many, they have made many steps towards digitalization and they have achieved something. So I wanted to show you both what is out there, examples of what's out there, and of course, what is, uh, of course, success stories. So, okay, it's okay to, to, so, what? 
smaller where for smaller organizations. I, I think my microphone has changed. So if you have any problems hearing me, let me know. Something has happened with my with my microphone. Okay. So this can include the cost of purchasing, installing the software, training employees, and maintaining the system. So number one is cost. Number two, integration. Very important. Integrating modern software platforms with existing systems and processes can be challenging. So, okay, if you want to put in your system, in your organization, another software. So it's going to work by itself, or can it be integrated with the rest of the systems? This can require significant effort to ensure that data is accurately captured and integrated into the platform. Integration is a big issue. You have to find a system that, that likes, that wants to be integrated. They have the capability to integrate to your systems. Data privacy and security, another big issue. <clears throat> Modern software platforms require the collection and storage of sensitive health and safety data. Ensuring data privacy and security can be challenging, particularly in industries with strict regulations. Most platforms are, <clears throat> are cloud-based. So this is one big thing for many big organizations. Number four, and very, very, very important, user adoption. Okay, so you decide to, you have decided to adopt a new technology, a new system. What, what about users? Are they gonna use it? The success of modern software platforms, improving health and safety performance depends on the employee adoption and engagement. If employees do not use the platform effectively, it may not achieve its embedded benefits. As we all know, I think most of us have experience with that. Number five, limited customization. Another big issue. Modern software platforms may be designed with a one-size-fits-all approach. So they are work as they are designed, which may not be suitable for all organizations. This can limit the customization options available, particularly for organizations with unique health and safety requirements. Okay, big organizations out there usually have their own reports, let's say their own processes, everything. So most organizations would need something that could be adapted to their established uh, processes. Okay, so uh, degree of customization is many times it's required by organizations. It's one reason why they don't go to plat software platforms. To make a parenthesis here, one of uh, the platforms that uh, are uh, easy configurable and customizable. Our platform PLCS is also, let me talk about, it the opportunity to talk about us. Uh, our platform is fully customizable, fully integratable. We can integrate it to your own systems and, uh, with, uh, and uh, we, uh, we, we can adapt it to your needs, okay? Just to close the parenthesis and just got the opportunity. I hope that by with this, uh, let's see, nothing more. I hope with uh, what I have said, uh, I just inspired you just a little to start looking towards next steps, okay? Because you cannot go to the last step and uh, let's say grab, adopt artificial intelligence right away. You have to take steps most of the time. So I hope you are in, I have inspired you just a little, some of you to start looking towards making the next small or big step towards digitalization. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Atanasius. It was really exceptionally interesting and useful. And we all imagine how many things, good things we can do with artificial intelligence. And with your help, of course. And uh, so let me start the session of questions and answers. And as far as uh, you are here uh, and you just have finished, uh, uh, Atanasius, let's start with you. Uh, so which questions do we have uh, from Mark? Thank you very much. How do you get around personal data issues? whilst using uh, reliable technology for employees. Thank you. Sorry, you couldn't hear me, yes? Now, can you hear me?
Can you hear me or oh no? Just yes, now. no. Yes, sorry. Yes, sorry. Yes, because for, for a couple of seconds I lost. Oh. Ah, okay, yes. How, so the question is, is, how do you get around personal data issues whilst using variable technology for employees? You can see it in, in, in chat. Yes, uh, I didn't have the time to see the chat yet. About private uh, data, the, yes. okay. Uh, issues worth with using variable technology for employees. Yes, I'm not sure about it because I'm not an expert in variable technology. But uh, I still can imagine that uh, with for employees, uh, I can still imagine that uh, information from wearable technology is just like uh, any information uh, uh, you can gather from any other uh, part of uh, uh, for a software system. Uh, so a wearable technology creates data and uh, creates specific data, which is uh, uh, sensor data and things like that. Uh, let me imagine now that uh, this information can get, the purpose of this information is to get in a software system eventually and being processed. So what kind of process? Just uh, create alerts, uh, to be statistically processed and, uh, and participate in uh, statistical reporting and things like that and many more, I guess. Uh, personal data. I guess that uh, this information, when it gets into a platform, it can, it can get anonymized directly. There are, this is the same uh, issue that we have with generally with GDPR and uh, personal data. So information, when, when it is in this information on the wearable, it is, it, it's not, uh, it, it is something that uh, can, uh, can uh, be, let's say, personal. Okay, so when it's transmitted somewhere else, I guess, this is my guess, okay, I'm not an expert in wearables. Uh, I guess that uh, when they, they are transmitted, they get public. So the system that receives uh, the information can do something about the data. So if they need to have uh, to have uh, the personal information, what the, the system needs to keep the personal information, then it uh, falls into the GPR processes, like all other information of its uh, of its employee. So it's a matter of GDPR generally. Uh, I cannot give a, a better answer on that because I have, I have don't have experience of wearable technology myself. I just wanted to. Like I included it in my presentation because I wanted to others to to motivate others to look towards that. Okay, maybe in the future I have better I will have better answers. Uh, yes, and uh, thank you for your answer. And uh, also there is um, some some notes from uh, Constantinos uh, Mamikas uh, he. Uh, was a part of uh, Coca-Cola European Partners Health and Safety yeah. Team for a couple of years in the UK. And uh, he said that uh, he has never been a mobile app with uh, this Health and Safety Connect. Just to clarify, so without criticism to your brilliant uh, presentation, but uh, uh, so where exactly it was used? I understand. Yes, maybe it's uh, false. I found it on the internet. They found this case study on the internet. So it, maybe it's false. I'm not sure. All these cases, I didn't uh, really investigate to see. To I didn't really. Uh, I didn't really you know, investigate to see if they are true or not. I just that's why I said in, the, in front that I just looked and found some cases. Just uh, just. Don't give any, don't pay any attention to this, okay? The, the rest of the part is the important part. I just give a few examples. Okay, so maybe some are true, some are not true, and uh, maybe some are found in a, as false uh, news, I don't know. Sorry for this. If I, something is not correct, I didn't uh, investigate deep enough, okay, for this, but I just want it, it's not my key point. My key point was for the rest, okay? You can ignore all the examples, all the case studies that I, uh, all the case studies that I included in my presentation. 
Thank you for the for, for this point because uh, next time I will spend more time to really uh, to really see what's doing and what's not before I put them in the in my presentation. Yes, and I I think it's just a note to to. to... Uh, to point how important for us as practitioners and we all are dreaming about having something that we can in one, two clicks just put a near miss or some information about the incidents very quickly and it will be in the system. And so uh, I would like your solution. One more thing that uh, I have a uh, I have started to investigate to see what's going on with artificial intelligence platforms. Okay, so there are points in my presentation that originated from looking at the chat BGT uh, platform, okay, artificial intelligence platforms. There I got some help on my, I will say, investigating what's going on with artificial intelligence. Okay, so and there are a couple of uh, points from there. That's that. And uh, we all are really keen to see, uh, you know, some live demonstration from how it works, uh, probably with video, with uh, some tools that we can easily see and prove how nice this platform is. Um, thank, you, thank you very much. And from Michaela, interesting information about IT special data. So thank many thanks to you. Uh, and let me go with questions to Roland. Uh, so it's regarding safety audit software. And uh, my question is, uh, do users, do they, they need special training? And do you have this special training? to start the process of using this tool? Yeah. Um, thank you, Olga. It's a good question, actually. In the software, in fact, there is a, a command and uh, which provides a guide how to use, how to install, uh, how to do every single process uh, of this, um, to use uh, this software. However, um, uh, a, a specific training can be provided to any user that can be uh, of interest to use this platform in his uh, or her uh, activity or process. Yes. But uh, the, the, the software, the platform itself, provides also information and details for every single uh, command which contains the software. Yes, thank you. And another question is about the uh, so audit information, audit reports are very sensible information sometimes for managers, especially. And uh, for example, if we have several sites in one platform, site one, site two, site three, and they don't want to show each other the outcomes. So can they limit uh, access to this information or how do you manage it? Is it? In fact, this is another benefit when using this audit software because it's up to you um, to share the information you want to share with uh, one um, contractor or another contract or with one installment or with another installment or with one facility or with another facility. So it, it gives a full flexibility to select what you want to share and what you want to, uh, to demonstrate to others. Yeah. Super. And uh, photos. So can we upload photos? It's very popular. Yes, yes, definitely. I, I mentioned in the presentation, you can attach photos in order to prove or somehow to demonstrate what you have found because sometimes the photo itself can speak a lot, can say a lot. Additionally, you can also attach documentation, for example, a specific procedure or a specific um, uh, law or specific regulation. And uh, yes, it is easy, you can attach yeah. Thank you. And uh, one more question from Amelia. Amelia, thank you for your question. Do you think it's, uh, it's 
it's possible to include safety management in ERP system. Yeah. Um, I believe uh, the, the, the safety management in ERP system is um, quite a challenging, uh, uh, let's say, um, initiative. But nowadays, with the developing of technology and uh, all these single things that we are um, implementing in our daily life related to technology, are helping a lot the uh, integration of safety management in an uh, ERP system. For example, there is another tool which Management Force has developed, which is indeed very good and very helpful, which is the PLCS uh, Suite Project Life Cycle Safety Suite. This tool uh, is, I'm not saying that you can integrate the full safety management system, but it is a very useful tool which, which you can integrate a lot of your daily work. You can keep it in one file and it makes things very easy and your life very easy. So a, 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 a good part of the safety management system is already include, uh, included into an ERP system with this uh, tool. I'm sure that in a later stage, um, the technology and the developed world will, will show us uh, better developments. And uh, I think we will go in this uh, direction very soon. Perfect. Thank you very much. And we are about to close in our session. Um, uh, thank you for your brilliant presentations and uh, uh, the audience, uh, you can reach our speakers uh, via the contact details. They are in description for each speaker in our agenda. And uh, we go uh, move on. Thank you very much and have a great Sorry, day. Luka, because I saw you. that and there are a few more questions. Uh, very okay. quickly, um, there is a question if uh, the HSD protocols uh, can use either uh, national legislation or EU legislation or ISO requirements. And yes, the answer is yes, you can, you can base your audit in one of, um, one of these, uh, one of these uh, uh, let's say, uh, legislation or your legislation or country legislation or ISO requirements, or you can base the audit based on the three or based on, on two of these requirements or based on one of these requirements. And um, in, in some cases, it might be very helpful. For example, if you are an organization operating in different countries, and there is a specific legislation in Ukraine, which is different in Greece. So when you make an audit in Ukraine, you use the Ukrainian legislation. In the same time, in the same organization, when you do an audit in Greece, you don't use the Ukrainian legislation, but, but the Greek legislation. So this is the, uh, uh, the, the facilities that it provides this the software. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, and another point uh, that is mentioned here, it's about uh, that this will, would be really nice for contractor and to share a contractor. So I do agree. Uh, there is another question from uh, Basmir. It seems a very useful, the safety of the software. It can easy the daily and weekly HSE inspection or site, and it can be shared in due time with contractors and contractors. This yes. also helps on better improving the risk assessment document. Apparently, this is um, a tool that can be used, uh, uh, organized in uh, frequent time, uh, depending on the targets that you will have with, uh, with uh, the commitment that you have been undertaken. Either you do it once per three months, either you do it every month, one, either you do it once per six months. It depends. And of course, it improves the risk assessment documents because at the end of the day, 
as I mentioned in my um, uh, presentation, this audit is based on risk assessment. So you, in other words, you are improving the, the risk factor, you are uh, improving the risk uh, situation in the workplace. So indirectly, you are um, somehow directed, guided to review also the risk assessment document and therefore improve it. Okay, yeah, perfect, thank you. Uh, and uh, some notes from Mark, uh, it, 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 it's, uh, there are some issues in uh, uh, personal data protective uh, protection, and I'm sure that yes, it's always difficult, but can be solved anyway, and in the end of the day, so we don't have another choice, so we're talking about safety, that's my point. Thank you very much for sharing your experience, Mark. And let me close my session uh, uh, for okay. to, to, to transfer to another session. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.